Hey folks, it's Brendan here, and in the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you how you can get your very own website up and running completely free of charge. The first step to setting up your own free website is Google searching for WordPress.com. Once you get to the WordPress.com homepage, you're gonna to wanna to click on the Create Website option. The second step is to decide on a name for your website. So in this demo video, I'm gonna do Brendan Mace Blog. Once WordPress verifies that that's a unique name, you can continue on to the next step. After that, you'll fill in some basic information and then pick the look and feel for your website. Now don't worry, you can change this at any time. So if you're uncertain about what you want for now, just go with something that you can always change later. Then it's gonna ask you what kind of plan you want. Now obviously, because we want a free website, we're gonna select the free option. Now that you've signed up your free account at WordPress, you can start to fill your blog with your content. The way to do this is if you go on the left side of your account dashboard, you're gonna see an option here that says WP Admin. When you click on that button, it's going to take you into your blog's WordPress dashboard. Now remember, this is completely free. You have an entire blog management system from WordPress that you can use for no cost whatsoever. Now to start adding content and blog entries to your blog, you need to go onto the left side of your WordPress dashboard and click on the posts option. So when you click on that posts option, it's going to give you a list of your current published posts. Now, when you start off with your account, WordPress is by default going to include a post called Hello World. We don't want that post. It's just there for example purposes and serves no value to us whatsoever. And we certainly don't want visitors to come to our blog and see this generic Hello World post because it doesn't add any value and it makes it look like we're unprofessional. So immediately, we just need to trash this post. Once we've trashed that post, we'll officially have no posts available on our blog. So we need to create a new one, which is where you go to the add new post option, which is again on your left dashboard. So when you click that button, you're going to be taken to a template where you're going to fill out information to create your blog post. So let's say here, we're going to say example post number one. So you would have a clever title here that's relevant to the kind of blog that you want to create. So in here, you would type in your content. So here's some example content. And you'd say, uh, this is my first blog post. We'll be keeping this blog fresh with loads of new content. about blue widgets or whatever the heck happens to be the niche that you're involved in for this WordPress blog. Now, one other feature that I want to show you in this video is how you would add images to your blog post, which a lot of serious bloggers are going to want to do. So to do this, you just need to click on this add media button that is right below your post title and it's right above your blog content. So when you click on that add media button, you can select a file from your computer and download it into your WordPress site so that you can now use it for your blog. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean in one second. Okay, so I've taken one of my Facebook profile pictures and dragged it onto my desktop so I can show you how to complete this process. So basically when you're ready, you click on the select files option. Then you find where the photo file is on your computer. Like I said, I dragged this photo file onto the desktop of my Mac. So I'm gonna select the picture that I wanna put into my blog post and I click on choose. Once I've picked that picture, it's gonna load up into my WordPress media library and it's gonna give me some options of the size and the alignment of my image. So I have a couple options here. First of all, I, this link to option, I want to change that to none. So when you have it on media file, what that means is that anytime someone clicks on that image, 
it's going to take them to the media file link for that picture, which can be really quite annoying for people that accidentally click on your images. So as standard practice, it's best for you to just disable this feature and turn it to none. Then if you want to turn it to the left side of the page, the right side of the page, or you want to do center alignment, you have the option here to do so. And WordPress is going to automatically format it for you in the appropriate HTML code, which in WordPress case, you don't actually need to know any of that geeky stuff. All you need to know is what you want to do in very simple language that anybody can understand. So I'm going to leave it at none. And then because the full size of this image is 960 pixels by 960, which is way too large for a blog post, I'm actually going to change it to be the medium size of 300 by 300 pixels. So WordPress is actually going to make this image smaller for me to fit more nicely into my blog post. Then I have the option to change the title. Now this is really important, guys, because we know actually that search engine rankings are all about having relevance to this Google search term that's inputted by visitors. So in order to rank highly for the search terms that we're targeting, whatever keyword we're going after, we have to change to the title. So let's say in this blog post, I'm talking about vacations, uh, vacations and travel. So I put in here vacations and travel as my keyword which is definitely not my keyword because it'd be way too competitive. But let's say that's what it is. I want to put that keyword actually into my image title, which is going to tell Google that my image is about this keyword, which is going to allow me to rank higher for whatever keyword I put in there. So I'm going to, whenever I'm ready and I have all my settings in place, I'm going to click on the insert into post button. And there you have it. I now have my image in my blog post. After that, I can write a bit more text, put it down there. And then whenever I'm ready, I have my text, I have my image, and I'm ready to publish this post. But before I do that, I want to show you how you can embed YouTube videos into your WordPress blog, because a lot of people are going to want to be using that functionality as well. And it's also really easy to do. So to get YouTube videos onto your WordPress blog, it's actually really easy to do. You just need to pick the video that you want to use off YouTube and then go below that video where it has the option to share. You want to click on that share button that's below the video. Once you do that, it's going to open up another area for different options and you want to click on the embed button just below there. Once you click on that embed button, it's going to provide you with the embed code to put on your WordPress blog. But before you do that, you want to make sure that you adjust some of these settings here. Now for some of you, when you click on that embed option, it's just going to show you this right here. It's just going to give you that embed code. But to get more options and to make it a better fit for your blog, you want to click on the show more option and you want to go down here where it says video size. Now by default, YouTube is going to provide the 480 by 360 pixel dimension size. But I've actually found that for most blogs, it's better to pick the 640 by 480 depending on the layout of your WordPress blog. So select the option that's best for your blog and then it's going to give you a number of different customizable options as well, such as whether to have suggested videos after your video finishes, whether you want the video to have player controls or whether you want the video title and player actions to be included in that video. Now what I've found is that if I actually own the videos in this space on YouTube, then I want to show the suggested videos when the video finishes because it's going to get the visitors to go to more of my content. But if I don't own these videos, which is usually the case, I want to disable this function because if I do not disable this function, then all the visitors that are engaging and consuming my stuff, instead of continuing to consume my stuff are going to be taken to somebody else's stuff and I'm actually going to lose visitors that way. So it's really important to me that I choose the, the option here depending on my content strategy. So in this case, I'm going to disable the show suggested videos. I'm going to keep the player controls in the video title and I have the video size that I want. So I'm just going to copy this embed code and go over to my WordPress blog. So back at the WordPress blog, most people make the mistake of pasting in the embed code directly into 
the regular WYSIWYG editor. But what you'll find is that actually doesn't work and it's just gonna display as the text as is shown in this video. The way to actually do it is to click on the text option, which is right beside visual. And this is actually the HTML text where you input HTML code. But we already have this code in place, so it's not gonna be too complicated for us. The only thing you need to do is click on that text button, go to the place in your content where you wanna have this YouTube video, and then paste in that YouTube embed code. So now when we do that and we go back to the visual section of our editor, you're gonna see that WordPress has allotted space for our YouTube video. And when we click on publish now, which is on the right side of our editor, when we click on this publish button to make the post go live, now we're gonna be taken to our posts where it shows our example post title, we have our text content that we put in there, we have our image that we uploaded, and we have our YouTube video embedded into our blog. Now when we click this, visitors click this, it's gonna take them to the YouTube video that we've embedded into our post, and we're all good to go with a WordPress post with images, text, and video all integrated. So there it is, folks. That's how easy it is to set up your free blog with WordPress.com. Now, the next time you visit your WordPress.com account to get back to your WordPress editor, again, you just need to click on the WP Admin button, which is gonna take you to your WordPress dashboard. Now, if you prefer to change the look and feel of your site because you wanna have a new updated look, or you wanna browse around because you're a little bit uncertain about the first choice that you made for your look and feel, this is really easy to adjust. You just wanna to go to the appearance, hover over that tab on the left sidebar of your WordPress admin, and then you wanna click on the themes button. When you get there, you're gonna have loads of different options that you can search through. There's 352 free themes to choose from, but this is the one that we've been using in this example video. Now, once you've picked the look and feel that you want and you've browsed through here and you've picked the one that's best for the blog you wanna create, anytime you wanna have a new post on the blog, again, all you need to do is hover over posts and click on the add new button. As you've seen in this video, it's really easy to set up your own free WordPress blog in the next few minutes. And for a lot of us out there, free is gonna be the best option, but there are some limitations that come along with being free. First of all, you are not allowed to monetize blogs that are hosted for free with WordPress. It's actually in their terms of service. Now, a lot of people are afraid of making the transition from free to actually owning their WordPress blog directly, but when you make that transition, it's only going to cost you about $6 per month. So if you can make more than $6, in revenue from your blog, then you 100% should move it over to paid hosting. And I show you completely how to do that in the easiest way possible in the next few minutes in this video right on the left side of your screen there. So if you're interested in creating a WordPress blog that has the potential to bring you in some income while you blog, then you absolutely need to have that option. But if you're creating a WordPress blog for personal reasons and you're using it more as a virtual diary, then that option may be unnecessary for you. But if you're at all intrigued by the possibility of making money on the internet by blogging or by internet marketing or by any of these forms, then you'll notice that my YouTube channel here has a number of really awesome videos that are gonna show you everything you need to know to make a good amount of income online. So to learn all that stuff, to learn how to create your own blog, do all that stuff and get access to all of my videos, click on the subscribe button on the right side of your screen there and you'll be taken to my page with all 70 plus videos that I have published. As always, thank you for watching my videos and I will see you guys in the next one.